I dare you to wake up Jesus and watch what he say to you. I dare you to wake up Jesus and watch what he say to you. I bet you he tell you, what, what you waking, you woke me up for this? Because it seemed like you about to drown in your life problems? You woke me up for this. Because it feel like you're about to sink on the boat that you're in and you're taking on waves. And those waves are colossal, they're giants. You woke me up for this. What, you ain't got no faith? Oh, ye of little faith. Why, why are you fearful? Because it seems like life situations that are conquerors, it seems like they're about to conquer you. Don't the word say that you are more than a conqueror? You, you woke me up for this. I dare you to wake up Jesus and see what he says to you. Let's go to Matthew chapter 8 verse 23 through 27. This is the same thing that happened to his disciples. Which is the same thing that happened to us in life. But before we go to that, let's, let, let's back it up a little bit. See, it was a strive. And the strive said to Jesus, he said, I will follow you wherever you go. And, and it's funny, <laughs> as, as a follower of Christ, that's what he wants. Us to follow him wherever he goes. But you know the funny thing about that? The funny thing about that was his, his response. He didn't just say, follow me. He said, <laughs> he said, a fox has a hole. The birds of the air have a nest. But the son of man have no place to lay his head. And what he meant by that was, I don't have a home. I am homeless. I don't know where I'm going to end up from one day to the next. So if you follow me, you might not like where you lay your head. And after that, he said, follow me. So now we're going to pick up from Matthew chapter 8, verse 23 through 27. He said, follow me. So after he said, follow me, it says, now he got into a boat. His disciples followed him. And suddenly, a great tempest arose on the sea. A great wind arose on the sea. Suddenly. So the boat was covered with waves. Hold up. Watch what it says next. But he was asleep. The Son of Man has no place to lay his head. So if you follow him, you might not like where he lay his head. Because you don't know what situations are going to rise from the circumstances that you end up in when you follow him. But he said, follow me. All right, so let's keep going. Let's keep going. And suddenly a great tempest arose. Remember what it did. It arose on the sea. So the boat was covered with waves, but he was asleep. Then the disciples came to him and awoke him saying, Lord, save us. We are perishing. But he said to them, why are you fearful? I told you, I dare you to wake him up. See what he said to you. He said, why are you fearful? See, the Bible said, God have not given us the spirit of fear. He said, He said, why are you fearful? O ye of little faith. Then he arose. Oh, oh. It said, then he arose. What did the tempest do? That great strong wind that threw the, threw the waves onto the boat and made it seem like, well, they felt like 
They experienced a near-death experience. They woke him up and said, we are perishing. Save our life. They thought they were about to die. So let's continue. Jesus arose. We'll get to that. O ye of little faith. Then he arose and rebuked the winds and the sea. And there was a great calm. So the men marveled. They marveled. Saying, who can do this? Who can this be? That even the winds and the sea obey him. See, I'm stuck on that word marvel, right? Because when, when someone does something and you're marveled by it, that means that you didn't know that they were capable of doing what they just did. But yet the disciples bend with him and watch him perform many miracles. But yet they still marvel. That's, that means they had no idea. Do we marvel sometimes at the thing that, that Jesus does in our life? Because yet though we say we follow him. We're followers of Christ. But yet we still marvel. Because we're with him, but we don't know who's with us. That puzzled me when it said they marvel. Now let's... Let's dig into that a little bit because when you look at Jesus, he stayed asleep. He knew what he was capable of. Huh. He stayed asleep. How is that possible? That it, it make me wonder like how is that how, how can you stay to stay asleep? Like where do you come what are you made of? Where do you come from? And then we look at David. See, Jesus is from the lineage of David. Jesus is a seed of David. When you look at David, David found himself on a boat in life. And he himself faced a great tempest that arose in the form of Goliath. And when the great tempest arose against him, he did the same thing that Jesus did. It's in his lineage, it's in his blood to arise to whatever's rising against you. What did the disciples do? What do we do sometimes in life? Lord, Lord, save us, we're perishing. Oh, ye a little fit. Why are you fearful? That's what Jesus came from. He came from a lineage of lion conquerors and bear conquerors and, and giant conquerors. That's where he came from. He was a seed of David. It wasn't in him to run. That's not his lineage. That's not in his blood. He don't do that. He don't do no running. They ain't the guy that I serve. So, Jesus stayed asleep. Because just like David, when he was on that battlefield in single combat with a giant, that tempest that arose against him, and when it splashed his boat and his boat started to sink, he stayed calm. He rested in what he was confident in. Just like Jesus, he was asleep. He rested in what he was confident in. Jesus stayed asleep. He said, follow me. He warned him, like, I have no place to lay my head. So if you're going to follow me, you might not like where you end up at. But I will never leave you nor forsake you. If you're a real follower of Christ, follow Christ. That means do what he do. If he on that boat and he sleep, you go to sleep. I don't care how big the waves get, go to sleep. Stay asleep. He ain't going to die. You think he brought you on that water to let you die? Go to sleep. What you facing the circumstances for? What you looking at them for? What you worrying and stressing out for? Go to sleep. Night, night. Go to sleep. Do what Jesus do in all circumstances. Any circumstances that you, that you study Jesus in, 
A true follower does what the leader does. You follow Christ. Christ the leader. Follow Christ. Mimic him. Do exactly what he do. That's why the Bible said, come as children. By no means will anyone enter into the kingdom unless they come as one of these. It's talking about a little child, a little lad. Because children, they are very impressionable. They do what they see others do. You have to be obedient to Christ. A follower of Christ. So if you're a follower of Christ, you cannot be a follower of Christ if you're not following Christ. If everything you do don't resemble Christ's actions, or you're not striving to be Christ-like in all your actions, then you are not a follower of Christ. You're just religious. You're, you're Christian, you're, your religion is Christianity. That's just your religion. That's not your spirituality. That's your religion. So Jesus said, follow me. When he said, follow me, he knew that the storm was coming, but yet he slept. David said, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil because you are with me. That's key. When David was on the battlefield, he knew who was with him. When the disciples were on that ship, they had no idea who was with him, even though he showed them many multiple times. He showed them who, who he was. He showed them. He didn't tell them, oh, I can do this. I can do that. I can do this. Not once did he say, he never advertised what he can do. He showed. <clears throat> he showed them what he was capable of doing multiple times. But yet they still didn't know who was on the ship with him. They had no idea. David said, yeah, though I walk through the valley of the shadow with death, I should fear no evil because you are with me. Their valley of the shadow with death was that boat. And they feared evil. That's why he woke up. He said, why are you fearful? The same thing we must ask ourselves. Why are we fearful? Because we are the boat. We are the boat. And the life is going to throw a lot of circumstances at us. It's going to throw a lot of water on our ships. And at some time, it's going to seem like we're going to, we're going to sink. And just like that great tempest that came suddenly, they didn't even have time to prepare for it. They didn't see, no, they didn't see the waves building up or nothing. No, it just came out of nowhere and just splashed them. They panic. That's what we do in life sometimes. We panic. Don't panic. Why are you fearful? Go to sleep. Rest. Rest in your peace. Jesus said, in me you may have peace, but in the world there shall be tribulations. Rest in your peace rest in your peace that's the true definition of rest in peace not when you die the bible said jesus said i am the way the truth and the life i am the way the truth and the life that means i am the true way to life that's, that's why in the previous verse, when the disciple, the other disciple, not the scribe, the other disciple says, uh uh, look, can, let me go and bury my father first. And then I'll follow you. Jesus said, let the dead bury the dead. Follow me. I am the true way to life. I am the way, the truth, and the life. The true way to life. Let the dead bury the dead. Follow me. See, in life, we are the ship. And when I say we are the ship, you got to understand that Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandments. Keep my words. Keep my commandments. He said, I will come to you. I will manifest myself in you. On your boat. He said, me and the Father will come to you. We will make our home in you. In the boat. You are the boat. So any circumstance that you have in life. You got to understand that Jesus is on the boat already. He's, he's resting in peace. He's internally, he's already in you. He's already on your boat. So it don't matter what arise against you in life. As his disciple, yes, you are Jesus' disciple. You will tell they are my disciples by the love they have for each other. I'm Jesus' disciple Stephen. My name is Stephen. I'm Jesus' disciple Stephen. That's who I am. 
You will tell they are my disciples by the love that they have for each other. Jesus and God are on the ship with you. They are on your ship. And I dare you to wake them up. You know why I say that? Because when the, when the lady when the lady with the blood disorder when she was when she was hemorrhaging, when she was hemorrhaging, when she was bleeding, she had enough faith that she said to herself, if I just touch if I just touch an article of his clothing, that I'll be healed. She had enough faith that if she came in contact. And the thing about it that Jesus didn't even see her. Nor did he feel her. But what he felt was the power on the inside of him proceed forth. He felt the power on the inside of him leaving him as it proceeded forth. And the only way that that could happen if he was touched by faith. So he said, who touched me? And everyone denied it. Who touched me? All the disciples denied it. They were like, we don't know. Nobody touched you. Somebody touched me because I felt the power from within me proceeding forth. Someone touched me. See, we don't have to touch him because we are in touch with him. So the power doesn't pro proceed forth. It constantly flows if you are in touch with him. It constantly flows. So on your ship in life, if you ever feel like you're sinking, don't panic. Lord, save me. I, I, I'm perishing. I'm perishing. I can't take it no more. This is it. Your life, life, life threatening experience. You are more than a conqueror. I don't care what kind of conquering situation come at you. You are more than a conqueror. Much more than a conqueror. So if you ever need, you find yourself on a boat and you're panicking. If, if, if you don't know how to get in touch with your faith, or if you don't even, if, if all else failed, Jesus is going to do what you call him to do. He said, anything that you ask in my name, I will do because I go to the Father. So whatever you ask in my name, I will do. He said, whatever you ask. You don't have to ask anyone else to go to him to intercede for you and then he goes to the Father. Not no preacher, not no teacher, not no bishop, not no lawyer, not no mama, not no that, none of that. You go directly to him. But if you're struggling in your faith, or you're struggling in your walk, or if you're new to the walk, and if you're sinking on your, if you're on your boat in life and you feel like you're sinking, and at the least, if you don't know how to wake Jesus up, for him to calm, he said that was a great calm. If you don't know how to wake him up so it's a great calm, I recommend our Mighty Life Coaching Service.